All right. Hello, everybody. We are going through uh, React today, and uh, we've got a pretty pretty full chat room today. And um, uh, we'll be going through the homework question that we had left off with yesterday, which was discussing the constructor and super, and as well as um, just the life cycle um, diagram that we had uh, discussed briefly at the end. But uh, I have to admit that I, I'm actually uh, probably in error in speaking about what I uh, had mentioned yesterday. But constructor is something that DK is going to talk about with us here at the beginning. So um, without further ado, take it away, DK. All right. Um, okay. Hey, oh, okay. Uh, a class are uh, in fact special functions, just as you can define uh, function expression and function declarations. The class syntax has two components: class expression and class declaration. Uh, one way to uh, define a class uh, is using a class declaration. To declare a class, you use the class um, keyword with the set, with the name of the um, class. Rectangle, yes, so class. Rectangle, curly bracket, constructor, the, um, the parameters or input or the objects for the, um, the, ugly, the objects with the class, they initialize within the um, constructor. Okay. Um, okay. So constructor and this is just a declaration of. Yes. Uh, yes. This would be the object. Yes. Of so, the, what the like within the curly brackets? That's the right. object yes. itself. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Okay. Right. Initializing the parameters for the class. You know, sometimes when you when you um um, it's like um having a method that has parameters. A function, sorry, a function that has parameters. But for for a class, you you need to like initialize it, like so. That is the the the, the basic function of of the of the constructor in a class. Okay. It takes it takes the uh, parameters for the class or the object or okay. like. Um, it, it, it really is like in it, like Python. Uh, yes, that's what I was, I was trying to say. That, that's what makes me. Python this, for this looks so script, much uh, like Python. Yes, for JavaScript, it is um, it is more of like the same name with the with the uh, the class. And um, for for uh, for Java, I think the way they do it is um, it, it takes the name with the class and it starts with um, I think uh. Forgotten because I haven't done Java in like two years or so. <coughs> There's a particular way to actually um, um, declare constructors within a class also. After you create the class, like the class um, name, then the curly bracket, and in Java is something, I don't know. Then inside um, the class, you, there's the way to, uh, I think, declare the constructor would be, I think, uh, forgotten though. But the main function is that constructors are uh, okay. Let me, let me go to the part where for it's basically right. initializing the object. Yeah, it is used to like it's used to create and initialize. Yeah, they're uh, calling it class declaration. Class. That's basically what constructor. Yes, is yes. Like it, it's actually used to actually um to create and initialize initialize um the um class um okay. class objects. And our that's, example that's was giving us props. So props is like height. It's the parameter. Yes. yes the initialization, the declaration, yeah. constructor. Yeah. It's all the same. Yes. That, okay. So why? Okay. When you when you only need to use super when you're when you're uh, inheriting a class. Like when you have when you have a, uh, a parent class. So okay. That, okay. The super part actually is used to initialize. Uh, the parameters or the object of the super uh, uh, of the uh, parent class. Okay. Uh, so the if there's ch if there's children, then you need to differentiate between super. Yeah, yeah, within the children, that is where you 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 need to like initialize the um the parameters of the super class. So that is when you need super. Okay. But you're not inheriting from any um uh, from any um uh, from any class. You don't need you don't need to use super. Let me, okay. go, let me let me I think I saw something on uh, why well, does, it, does anybody have any questions at this point? Anybody confused? <laughs> that little paragraph has has a lot of good content it looks like that. Sorry, what was that Andrew? 
Okay. So basically the constructor method is just a special way, okay, is a special method for creating initializing a, an object with a class. And a class is nothing yeah. more than a special type of function. Just Yeah, it's like um you gonna yeah, create, let me, I think there's a way you can okay declare class that is um, a little bit different. And a class is an object. Everything in JavaScript is an object. Mm -hmm. Everything in JavaScript is an object. So I think you can declare a class in a particular way. Like when you, you know you can declare when you declare a function, uh, when you declare um, an object, sorry. Uh, let me add, let me do something. Like we did it back, the, um, uh, for the like when you de declare the class, that's just basically setting up that there's an object and it has parameters and it has properties. Let me so that that begs this question: Why would we choose to use a class rather than just declaring a function, or to keep it more organized, declaring it as a method? Okay. Um, There's got to be a great reason to set this thing apart. Okay, why a class exactly, right? Yeah. Okay, let me see. I mean, there's got to be a reason to make it a class rather than one of these other... I think constructor is, is a method. Like a special method within the class, yes. Yeah, it, con, the con, constructor is a method. Yeah. Because it's like a key word in terms of met, like methodology. Yeah, but it's, it's special, so you can't declare yeah. it twice within the class. Yeah, it, it's a one-of-a-kind method. Yeah. Yep. That works to initialize. To create and initialize them. So it, it's initializing the object. Yeah, so if you want to call this particular right. class rectangle method, you would have to like uh, pass in the height and width with it. Yeah, and then just basic understanding of English helps us understand that this dot height equals height is, you know, intuitively we can understand that that's going to be the height of the rectangle. Exactly. So <laughs> when you have to use it within the um, the class in any method within the class or anywhere in the class, you have to yeah. use this dot height instead. Yeah. So, okay. Um, that helps make a lot more sense though. And then in terms of understanding the super. But we need to answer Andrew's question. That's the point. He said, why, why, why a class? Why not the function for, um, for, um, for React, right? For you. Isn't it because you need to render an object rather than rendering a function? Uh, by itself, right? Yeah, I understand, but I don't. That really, uh, that that doesn't really answer Andrew's question. From what I understood, from what he asked, I, that doesn't really understand Andrew's question. So, um, okay, you, you know, you can actually, you can actually. The point is, Andrew, you can you, you can declare a component. You can create a component. We uh, there are there are different types of components. There's function. Function component, <coughs> function component. There's a. Uh, um, let me. Uh, I saw something. Component. Okay, you can see there's function and class components in React. Okay. okay. This is a yeah. function component. Like anything that actually takes in prop. Like any function or class, uh, that anything that actually take, takes in, um, the way you uh, identify a component is that it takes in props and renders and returns, sorry, and returns um, a JSX. That is like the basic function of a component. It takes in props and rent and returns a JSX. So you can you can um, you can just use React dot React dot render. Like and add like the uh, the angle bracket, the name of the uh, the name of the of the class or the name of the function. Then you close it, comma. Then you add the selector where it's going to be rendered to, and it will pop up like this. I think. Um, mm -hmm. So you can you can you can also use a function to declare a component in the Then you can you can also do it this way. 
and where he extends the um you create the class that extends the React component to create this is another way of creating the components in React. This way. That makes it, that makes things a lot clearer. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so you can create it this way, but you can like I think you can use ES6 to create the function. You can use you can create the function in ES6 format also, like the function um component. Well, I, I don't really advise that, but is I think we can create. I think you can create in an ES six uh, um a way also. So these are like the two ways of um creating a component. And okay, so uh, okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah, man. I just wanted to ask the question. Okay, uh, where do you? Where do you use function over class? Okay. I think I was said. Sorry? I, I didn't get what you said. Like, um, can you repeat yourself? Yeah, I'm saying that when do you use, when, how do you know that you have to use function over class? Oh, okay, okay. Um, I don't, I don't think there's, um, it can, be, it can, it can be used over each other, but I think when you want to like, um, 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 how would I put this? You know, when you are creating more than one component, yeah, like the, the the I think the best way to do this is like create like the uh the, the child component, like the the small small the small components. I create mm -hmm. them like using the function, like create them uh, create create those child components using the function components. Then. The, the the like the final um company that actually takes in everything and couples everything together into one you can you can use the class components because that that um that that's like <coughs> that more positions like work with uh, I think larger stuff within the, the class component. I don't think about I think that's like um the recommended way to actually go about um um, um using our components in React yeah, let me let me show you something. Okay. Okay. Hey Elliot, yeah. do you advise learning uh ES6 before I finish the uh JavaScript on Free Code Camp, the basic JavaScript? No, I think you need to you need to like learn um normal JavaScript before you learn ES6. Yeah, I, I, I would say keep going through the basics. Um just but, take it. Um, but it, it may be helpful for you to go through the the Scrimba intro to JavaScript. You can you can go through those double speed, and you get to work through them like quickly. So like you could probably go through all of them in less than an hour. Okay. And and you would come out of it understanding basic JavaScript pretty pretty decently. You know, and you could do the same thing for ES6. That's what I'm doing. Which uh, which instructor on Scrimba? Uh, I think Dylan Israel does um, JavaScript and ES6. Does both, yeah. And then he may do. I don't know if Bo Carnes may do modern technologies and then ES6 as well. But uh, don't quote me on that. But I'm planning to go through Bo Karn stuff as well, um, but I'm just, just working through the ES6 from, uh, I've gone through the first one from Dylan, and now I'm going through the ES6, and it's really good. I'm gonna check and, that out, thank you. And I've heard that the React is very good for Scrimba. Like, almost like that should be one of the main things I try to, I try to learn as I'm learning this as well through the cert course, you know. But um, anyhow, let's get back to what we were talking about, though, DK, because I think yeah. I'm, I'm reading through this and it's really helpful. I almost think like I need a uh, I need a, a few hours just to like read this, you know. Yeah. Like really read this and understand it. But okay. um, it, it's really it's really helpful to just talk about it with you though too. Okay, no problem. I'm trying to answer um on the question that was dropped earlier. That why when should we use the functional component and when should we use the class component? It's recommended. To, I think it's recommended 
use the, the functional component when you're when um you're trying to break down your GSX to like bits, like to, to, to like so you'll be able to you use them later in your in your uh, project or something. So I think it recommended to actually create like it's five the smaller parts of your of your of your of your of your project or like so breaking down your company into bits using the functional component, then you couple everything within like uh, a class component. Something like this. The square, I think it's on shoot. Okay, no problem. This one is this one returns um, a button. This particular um uh Particular company returns the button as a functional component. Then within um, board, yes, this one actually takes in um, uses the square component to create um, this. I mean, I don't really understand. I actually um, got um, got this particular code from. From the official distance, the tutorial. Yeah. Yeah. Would, uh, yeah. <laughs> would using a React component be more useful if uh, what you're building is more complex? Yes, yes. So, when you, the point is, React actually advise you to actually break down your code into like bits. If, yeah. if, 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 if you think a particular section is complex enough and you might, re and, you, and you need to, like, you might, if, and if you're repetitive, if it's complete no one is repetitive, then it needs to have its own component. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what's up, Sharla? Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm glad you made it. I'm glad I made it too. We've been playing uh, Zoom tag with you for a while. I know, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, everybody, this is Sharla. Uh, you can call her CJ. It's uh, nice to meet everybody. Nice to meet you also. <laughs> Is oh, uh, Charlo, I saw what you had wrote in the uh, feedback. Yo, I gotta talk to you about that. That sounds like, like you know, like I didn't mean to make your head hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it was so late, so I was like, yeah, it wasn't because of that. That's not why my head was hurting. <laughs> it was just we'll late. Some, uh, we'll get some free time. I'd like to uh, sit down and maybe discuss something about that, like after class or something, maybe. Um, okay, yeah. that's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Don't let me interrupt you guys though. Let's come back to React. But um, we were talking about um, we were talking about the constructor method and super within uh, the class, and then creating a React component. And then we were also kind of just talking about just now the difference between um, you know when is it best to use a function and when is it best to use a component. Uh, or uh, you know the object uh, component um, so we're just kind of teasing that question out just um, and DK um, DK's already gone through this portion of free code camp so he was kind of okay. talking about it but I'd be interested to hear what you had to say CJ <laughs> um, honestly react I like I've just started learning it so I'm not really, I'm probably not the person to talk to about React. <laughs> That's all right. Um, yeah, we're, we're kind of all in the same boat. And, okay. and I've kind of become of the opinion if, um, like, it's okay to be wrong. And, okay. like, I feel like yesterday I said something and I was totally, like, talking uh, – just like in a wrong, inaccurate spot. So today I kind of like backtrack myself, but, <laughs> but, uh, but that's okay. Like, um, it's totally okay to do that. That's what I'm trying to say is like, just yeah. say what you know today. And if you know a little bit, then that's okay. <laughs> you feel like tomorrow you learn something and you had to correct yourself. Don't worry about it. We've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> okay. So, like, I picked that up with, uh, have you guys ever heard of uh, Sean Wang? He's uh, uh, on Twitter. His, uh, his handle is S-Y, or S-W-Y-X, Swix. And he shares a lot of great information about learning in public, like what we're doing now. But okay. 
that's something that he was sharing is just that, you know, when I learn something, you know, sometimes I learn and then I'm often wrong, but I'm never afraid to like, you know, put, put my information out there. And then if somebody corrects me with, you know, good reason, then I just admit that, Hey, you're right. And I'm wrong. And that's okay. Um, yeah. Okay. But, um, I don't know anything. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's fine. I mean, we're okay. kind of all in the same boat. That's why we're here. Okay. I think I should use a simpler, um, um Elliot, I think I should use a simpler example, right? This one is a little bit, um, I know you um, understand. What I'm trying to say is that the, the smaller bits of like the old project or like the, the component can be broken down into another component. Then you just add the component name to your, to like the parent, um, parent component. But so, so, so like those smaller components are highly recommended to be, to be, to, 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 are highly recommended to be um, declared in a, like in a functional way, like, as in a functional component. Use a functional component, component for them. Then the like the um the the parent class or uh, the parent class you can declare that in the, uh, as a class component. I think it's, um, it's but, that way. <clears throat> I guess I would say um I don't know. This is probably what I, my intuition is telling me, but it could be totally wrong. But um, I feel like components are built for things that are clearly objects like say you're creating a button or like a timer and within that timer um, it needs to have the ability to increment or it needs to have the ability to count up from zero or something like that yeah. um, and whenever you're building something that's clearly you know it's an object that's going to be displayed on the on the page then that's the time that you need to use a class, but a function um, might it, it's it's maybe like more necessarily like something that's just you're just storing information in a variable or storing information in um, in terms of like what we've got there is you know it's going to be something that like it displays hello and the person's name, but it's not necessarily something that's gonna be beyond that. It's just gonna be a simple text or something like that. But I may be totally wrong on that and I might have to backtrack later, but that would be kind of my understanding. Yeah, it's all right. So, okay, <coughs> let me do something that actually, that might help or make, make we all understand this thing better. You can see like this, this component, the class component, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. use the class company says class clock extend them. so this is the name of the of the company clock and this is um it returns the jsx so like the h1 hello world the um the uh dates this dot probs dot um dates so what we should uh what what i would um what does do is that since this um company is a bit let's say it's a bit complex we can actually um we can we can actually create um another another component a functional component just to break this particular um class down a little bit so um, function okay and it it might be something that um it just depends on whatever you feel <clears throat> comfortable with in terms of the the code that you're writing you know yeah yeah true, true, true. like uh, you, you can uh, probably do you know you can probably do one or the other it doesn't really matter but maybe there are certain situations that might be better suited for an object or component you know yeah uh maybe dk you can maybe elaborate on this i found one medium article which which uh, elaborates about this uh, functional versus class component. It says that if she, it's good that to start with functional component. Okay. So in the meantime, if you know that you are going to use state, then you change it to class component. 
Okay. Component okay. don't have it. The state, okay. Yeah, and also beside that, uh, functional components, they don't have life cycle hooks. So okay. you have to change to okay. class component. When you want to do that complex, you need a, 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 you need a class component. Like if, when you want to like declare your state as in this the state and um, add a dictionary to it and all of that within your prop. Yeah. You need, you need a, a class component. When you yeah. want to... Uh, Declare like the life cycle, like oh, we will mount, uh, we will mount stores, like those methods. Yes, you know, we can only do that within a class component. So, you when you don't need any of that, when like when it's just taking a bit of your code that is not really doesn't really take much, yes, then you use you just use a functional component because it's simpler. Yeah. Okay, let me do this, okay? The hello, let's let's uh, move this hello word, let's move it. To a new, um, um, a new component. Hey DK, are you using something on the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, go ahead and share your desktop because we're just seeing um, the React docs. Oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking about it since, and I didn't know it wasn't showing up. Can you guys see my uh, my screen, uh, my code editor? Had you Hello. been talking about stuff and we weren't seeing it? <laughs> wow! <laughs> I've been talking for like like a group. Just like okay. this is what I was talking about. Like, um, this hey, is DK, can you make that a little bigger? Okay, no problem. It's uh, it's pretty small. Sorry, that's fine. Yeah. It can be it can be increased. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, is it okay this way? Um, Elliot, is it okay? Hello, Elliot. Hey, sorry, DK, I'm with you. Hey, I, I, can you see it now? Yeah, a little bit. Could you make it a little bit bigger there? No problem. Is anybody else having issues seeing that? Yeah, once more, once more. <laughs> I had no idea my audio was freaking muted this whole time. That's so embarrassing. Oh, are you chatting with us? <laughs> yeah, I you was know, like, why is everybody ignoring me? <laughs> 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 Yo, check out, check out this link, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I think I said, I'm just letting everybody talk over me. I'm like, well, all right, I'm going to talk to you guys did you wait. <laughs> 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 I got this thing. I noticed how you guys were mentioning that it's related to Python a little bit. So maybe if you guys, because you guys are a little bit ahead of this on me, DK, go to the chat right quick. When you get done okay. with what you're doing and um, check out this link, um, I, I would like to get your opinion on, uh, you know, it's with the classes over functions and what you guys were speaking on. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. But, <laughs> it's in Python, right? <laughs> um, yeah, Python. yeah, it's in but, Python. This is oh, in React. You posted the question on Quora, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, mm -hmm. uh, you can always work on it later, right? Oh, yeah. Since, let's uh, let's maybe talk about this for no more than like another five minutes, and then let's try to get into free code camp. Yeah. Let's just. All right. Well, let me just get out like func the, the, what I was trying to like express on functions. Uh, no, okay. Let's we, we consider this. Let's consider this as the parent as a parent class, as in the parent component. Sorry. So it's, let's say it's, it's a bit complex. You want to like break it down a little bit. You can just, um, let's say you want to like, um, or you want to move this to have its own component as in greeting. So mm -hmm. this is uh, a, a component, then you pass in props like the normal rules for a component and it returns the JSX. So return, let's put this in the bracket. <clears throat> Okay, so so this is a so you can just do this and you replace this with um. And one thing you should know is that um it is recommended to um you have to declare a component like with uh, an uppercase like you start uh, okay. a component with an uppercase so it I won't see. I see yeah, so we have to um um render it as as a an HTML tag. 
Yeah, so you're, ca you're, you're, calling, uh, you're calling a, a different piece that's uh, just a function. So you're just calling the function up to yeah. the, the other component that is yeah. clock, the clock class. Yes. yes. So okay. we still, I'm just trying to break it down. So when you want to, if you want to reuse this particular part in any other part of your program, yeah. It's just, yeah. So creating a, a component for a particular section of code makes it reusable in other parts of your code. So if you okay. so the why you want to break your code down like to um smaller bits. One, yeah, you, yeah. You okay. the, uh, this thing, then um makes your code simpler. Then it, it's easier to maintain also. So when you have a large project, this is this is this is when you know how um useful yeah. breaking down your code would be because you, you don't repeat you don't, yourself, you know. Yes, well, that's yeah. that's a bad practice in um uh, in um, coding in general, you don't repeat yeah. yourself. Yeah, you just repeat the function, but that's a lot shorter than typing everything out again. So when there's an error, you need you, you just need to go back to one particular place and correct it. You don't have to like go back like multiple. Yeah. Um, and then places. it corrects it in all those places that you uh, called called the function. Exactly. Yeah. Hi, DK. When do you use this uh, props in the greeting function? You pass it props. Okay, when you want to like the way to use props now is that let me. Yeah. Yeah, so when you um, uh, declare the, the function here, yeah, like as in yeah. the company here. Yeah. So yeah. let's say you like the function needs um, a property. So you can let's say name the greeting name. Like you need to add a name to the greeting. So name is equal to um, let's say. Um, ah, okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, let me. So it's almost that. like it's got its own attributes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as a brand that's new component. A property, that's a property. So yeah. when you do this, so I can use it within the um, child component. You just, you, you know, you know, okay. Uh, you know, to, to actually um, uh, to, uh, to uh, pass in JavaScript within a JSX, you need to put in the curly braces, right? Yeah. So you know that is JavaScript. So props, right? Dot mm -hmm. name. <laughs> yeah. So that is so when you pass in a particular when you pass in um um um, um properties within uh, when you call it right you need to to uh, to um use them within the components you just use props dot the name of the property yeah okay okay so when you do this you should be able to let me render it let me render this so you see what I'm talking about are you using live server or something. No, 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 you just render it on my browser, not, not any, Okay. Yeah. Nothing fancy. <laughs> okay, sorry, let me just... Oh. No port, no, nothing. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> uh, do you have the live server extension? <coughs> yeah, I think I do. Uh, that I just, little thing is that thing at the bottom of your screen that uh that satellite looking thing? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that satellite, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't tend to like use this thing directly because that satellite should open it. Oh, this. Yeah. One click. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, click it there. Open your live server. <laughs> 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 you guys are laughing at me. No. Oh wait, uh, that's a GitHub. Okay. What I editor use, is this? I use Atom, right? So Atom. Okay, okay. Yeah, so. it, it should still have an extension, though, right? It, it has a live server. Be, yeah, it should. It to be famous, right? I have one. I have one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah start. One. Start your live server. Yeah. There you go. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. You got your port open now. Okay. Oh, but it's opening. So, no, yeah, it's just I have to like uh, so go to source. And oh, this is just. Oof. Wait a minute. It's slash react. I don't think it's a. What live server do you guys use? What's the name? Well, you, you use live the server. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. what? I wonder why it's not working. 
Where is your 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 path? I mean, where is the path of this? It's file? opening up the because I can see that the path is desktop React dot example. So you have to go to desktop. Yeah, I know. I know. I, oh, I, okay. It's not the it's index. Mm. Yeah, it's not the index. I have, do I just have to like uh, um separate the whole thing? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> well, can't you just go into your browser and open that up? Go go to yeah. go to your browser, click open, open file, and then go to that file and open it. Go to desktop, open file. Yeah, and then go to your React example, wherever that is. Desktop. It's in desktop. And then... Yeah, yeah. Open that up. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, it's just even a sad there. Hmm. Okay, okay. I think there's an issue somewhere. But... Wow. Yeah, inspect it. Inspect it. See what the, yeah. the error is. Function. Rendering. Maybe, do you have to declare? The class before the function, or no, no, it's the alignment is okay. Okay. So, um, maybe sure. maybe inspect the errors on the yeah on the, on the output in the browser. <laughs> and also, and also, you are rendering uh, the clock. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is just this. What I'm doing here is just um when. Uh, I created a function to actually render, uh, render the um, render like the component as in the parent component. This yeah, that's the parent component. But a person in a new <coughs> a proper date, a person in a proper date, which okay. I use there. So that which, means every second they are calling the function tick. Exactly, you actually okay. updates the time. It updates yeah. the time. I'm, I'm okay. calling the function which renders. The uh the clock, but it doesn't re render everything. It only renders like the the, the, the H one, like it's the one that yeah. is part that contains the time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's just creative. Create the element. That would be. Um. Okay, just like so working before. <laughs> All right. Hey DK, okay. what? I'm what gonna say. Idea? Why don't we um. Why don't we try to do that a later time? After you've okay. got you've gotten into work, and then we'll take a look at it. Maybe. Oh, I think really, I think the issue is me, you know, adding um this project the type um uh, text to uh, Okay. Yeah, give that a stab, and if it works now, then then cool. But if it's not not working, oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go, dude. You got that part. Well, I need to remove this part, so you can see the um time is um there we changing. Go. Oh, that's cool. Oh, cool dude. Yeah, when nice. you when you check this on um uh, um on the on the React um this thing, what's the name? Okay. React uh, extension. Wait. Yeah, you can see the time is um updating. Nice. When yeah. when when the, this this time actually calls the function every calls this tick function every one second. So and the tick function renders the clock. The clock component as in the uh, parent, the parent <coughs> component. Too. Yeah, uh, the good thing that in here is that it's not even refreshing the div. It's only it's just, it's just refreshing the date, like date yeah. parts. It doesn't refresh any other thing. In, yeah. Because that's the only thing changing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's oh. just dynamic within yeah. within the div every second. It's uh, it's intervals. Dating. Hmm. And you're it's not only having, uh, the difference. Uh, yeah. hmm? the, the computer is doing it hmm. without without a human being. So you can see every second. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. really? That's really cool. All right, man. We got to get into it now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think you whet the appetite for today, DK. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. So uh, we are moving to Freakle Camp, right? 
Yeah. yeah. Did we lose somebody? No, my computer overheated. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think one guy. Ah, uh, this is a computer. <laughs> we lost somebody. Yeah, I said it's just two two Jonathan, then there is one dead. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, you guys talk yesterday. I thought we had nine though. We, no, I, we, we I know we lost seven. one Jonathan, but then <laughs> seven. There was somebody else that was in the chat. Oh, Andrew said he hopped off his laptop. But Andrew's still here. Oh, he hopped off his laptop then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, right. Elia, where did we stop? Um, um let me one. open up. I gotta open up my VS Code again and. I think yeah, yeah. Uh, we stopped in the compose React component. <coughs> when yeah. you say? I think we just did one lesson yesterday. We didn't. Oh. We didn't go very far. Uh, Composing we, React. Composing yeah. React. Down, down. We, uh, yeah. yeah. We, we went down the rabbit hole of uh, code sandbox for a little while. No, composing. Yeah. Compose up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Should I do the pleasure? Hello? Yo, yo. Should I go ahead or what are we, what are we doing? Um, I'm not sure. I have One to get my laptop. I'm restarting. Yeah, I'm opening up my. Okay. When you guys are ready. Okay. One moment. My computer's going a little slow. Your computer can't go slow. <clears throat> you, got the, you got 16 gigabytes over there, man. I know. Somehow it is. Uh, I, I probably need to start um, dumping all these uh, videos onto... I have all these MP4s now. I need to start dropping them onto my... Uh, it's probably It's got to be something that's running in the background that's doing it. Yeah, I got to... Maybe the tabs. If you're using Chrome, that's probably it. Yeah, I probably need to close out some stuff. But anyhow. <laughs> Sorry. I don't have that much open in Chrome there, but I don't know. I but anyhow. Hold on, hold on. Okay. All right. Now I'm here. And let's go to front end. React. Okay. Yeah, we just got to now we're at create a component with composition. Okay. okay. Can we, so, can we, um, is everybody at create a component with composition? Uh, yep. Okay. yep. All right. Speak up if you are not. All right. All right, DK. You you want to take it away, or you want me to? Let me do this one. All right. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay. React. Compose React components. As the challenge continues to use more complex compositions with React, component and JSX, there is one important point to note. Rendering a six style class component within other components is no different than rendering the simple component you used in the last few challenges. You can render JSX element, stateless functional component, and ES6 class component within other components. In the code editor, the type of food component is already rendering the component called vegetables. Also, there is the food some component in the last challenge. Nest two component inside of food component first. First, note citrus, and then citrus. Both of these uh, components are provided for you in the background. Next. Nest the fruit class component into the type of type of comp, type of food component below the H1 header and above of vegetables. The result should be a series of nested components, which uses two different components. All right. So, in the code editor, type of food component. component. Okay. Food components are already rendering a. So there's a vegetable and there's a fruit component. Okay. So he's already rendering um, okay. vegetable components. So there's a fruit component from the last time. Next two components inside of fruits. Okay. So there's non citrus and then there's citrus. 
So they, yeah, so they are, they are built with uh, like it's actually underneath so citrus none. On citrus, so that's a component. Then uh, we okay, yeah. So treating them as yeah, because it was actually it's as a uh, component. Yes, they actually build on that need. So we're just trying to. They are then shows how to like um add components to like um to another component. So after that, both of these components are provided for you in the background. So the two, the, the um, um, citrus and non-citrus components are provided for us in the background. So we don't need to worry about them. So next, um, next. The a, wait a minute. Am I on the right one? Now? I think I think we might be one lesson back, DK. Actually, I'm oh. sorry. Oh. We're actually at the create a component with composition. Okay, create a component. And you were reading the rent. We're one lesson uh, well, it's, back. It's two lessons back. It's two. Okay. Yeah, this I'm one, sorry. Right. The okay. one with the nav bar, dashboard, and footer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm there. Yeah. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> okay, React. Create a component with composition. Now we look at how we can compose multiple React components together. Imagine you are building an app and I've, and I've created three components in navbar, dashboard, and footer. To compose these um, components together, you could create an app parent component which renders each of these three components as children. To render a component as a child in React component, you include the component name written as a custom HTML tag in JSX, for example, in the render method, you could write app Nava dashboard dashboard app. Okay. When React encounters a custom HTML tag that references another component, a component a, co a component name wrapped in this. Like in the in like in this example. It renders the markup for that component in the location of the tag. This should illustrate the parent-child relationship between the app component and the nav, nav bar, dashboard, and footer. In the code editor, there's a simple functional component called child component and a React component called parent component. Com um, compose the two together by rendering the child component within the parent component. Make use of, make sure to close the um, child component tag with a forward slash. Note: child component is defined within an with with an ES6 arrow function because this is a com a very common practice when using React. However, note that this is a this is just a function. If you aren't familiar with the arrow function syntax, please refer to the JavaScript section. Okay. So this is a child component, and it renders a div, which um, uh, which is which has um, a child of a um, of a paragraph. I'm a child. I'm the child. And there's a parent component. This. Which, uh, which extends um, this thing. So this is like the constructor it initializes the, the super part, initializes the, um, the, the constructor of, of, of this particular um, parent, parent class and renders um, an H1, a D which um, has an H1. And what we're supposed to, uh, in the code editor, there's a simple functional component called child component and a real component called parent component. Compose the, but the one thing you should notice here is um, um, a simple functional component, a React component. So the class component is, ten, is um, I think 
um, it can be called React component in short also. Yeah, so the child component is a functional component. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and it's using yeah. ES6. Yeah, you can is, is, there, is it really just asking us to add a, a self-closing tag here? Yeah, yeah exactly. that's it. To actually add the child component. To in, in between those two lines, but it's just a self-closing tag of child component. That's all that needs to go yeah. there. So you can see, I, I said it earlier, that you can declare the functional component with ES6 also. So you yeah. can see. So that's a function. Yes. And it's using ES6. Yes. So you can see. So, it's, so essentially, we're just calling it down here within the render. Yeah. Well, you, you haven't yet, but once you once you um, open tag child component with a with a close tag, and um, then we can call the class. Yeah. Once he does that, then it's going to populate in the the console. Okay. So uh, compose two together by rendering check and make sure to check. So we will um, the child components. Yeah, no, it populates. Yes, it but is. it's calling the uh, the child component function from above. It's just putting a div with I am the child inside of the parent. It just it when they returns this to the GSX. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty slick, man. I am the, pair. I am the child. I am the walrus. Goo -goo -goo -goo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who doesn't understand this? I mean, who's having problem understanding <coughs> this? I think I, I think I get it. Yeah. Uh, who doesn't understand how like um um how the um function has been declared here? That is clear as mud, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ES6 of it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is a way of declaring yeah. a function. Yeah, this is yes. just standard ES6. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's standard to an extent, too. Um, but the arrow is basically saying. Hey, this is, this is what they call this the big arrow. So it's you just, replace just the, function, function. Um, the function reserve word, like the function. You know, to declare a function, you need the function keyword before the bracket. The function is a, is a component. Yeah, this, this replaces the function keyword, like the big arrow, the equals yeah. to one. Rather than saying function, you can just use the error. The big arrow, yeah. 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 So fun. you're declaring the constant there, but then you're saying yeah. it's yeah. empty. It's then the next thing would be that you were calling a function with the words function, but instead of the words function, you can just use that error. You know, I think this is this this is called a I think this is called a nameless function in JavaScript. Like, let's just mm -hmm. let's ignore this part for a second. Like this part, this, mm -hmm. this whole thing is called a nameless function in JavaScript, as in declaring a function without the name. Like you can do you can do this this way. This particular one you can create. You can do this this way. Um, function. This empty, yeah, and just uh, return that. You don't that. And tell me if I'm correct in this. You would have to name it first, const child component equals function. Am I mistaken in that? You would declare it as a constant function first through function declaration? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just you assigning the function to the um to the very to the um to the variable you declared. So you can you can replace this particular part with this, you can just just comment this out for a second. That's the functional component right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So this is this this is called a nameless function. So so you can just add this to it and still do the same thing. This is me using the number yeah. JavaScript. Maybe yeah. We should make it a little bit easier to understand. The, the error just simplifies. Uh, that you don't have to type out function. Yeah. Okay. That that's all that's happening in ESX. And okay. are we we're supposed to be pushing towards ES6 nomenclature for job purposes anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like 
In vanilla keep... JavaScript, you would you wouldn't just... you wouldn't use const. You would just use um, you use yeah, var. Yeah. Yeah, you use var, yes. But well, const want... is more of like it's a block uh, wait, scope. Wait, 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 wait. You can't really, can really assign anything to that variable. This const, so it makes it it makes it better. So you won't just um, reassign something to your to your component later on. So using const using const for 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 a nameless um, this thing is advisable for a nameless function for your component is advisable because. You don't. You won't. You like. You won't. Be, you won't be pushed or. Yeah. Or, you, you can't. You can't declare it again and replace you can't assign, the value. Yeah, you can't, yeah. you can't yeah. declare. You, you, can't, it you can't assign it again. It's assigned once, and that's what it is. You can't declare. You can't assign it again. What was that, CJ? I said. Yeah, I was just um, kind of just saying what you were saying. Once you declare it, you can't change it when you use um, the constant. Yeah, yeah it, it's gonna stay whatever you've declared it to be. Yeah, you can't declare it again, and you can't you can't you can't assign it to anything again. But if it's let, then yeah. you can't declare it again, but you can assign you can reassign it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it, it's still it's still it's still not immutable, but it it can change, but you can't assign it a a new value. Yeah. yeah. Like once it's assigned, it's assigned. But let can be reassigned. But it can be redeclared. But var can be redeclared and reassigned. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so DK, for uh, for class for class and extends in that React component right there, I'm gonna have to under for me to understand what class and extends means. I'm gonna have to go in and okay. learn it, right? No, 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 let me let me try to break it down a little bit. So this is a class. You declare a class, then yeah, you. Uh, this is a class. So this extend um, React the component is just inherit. This is just inheritance in JavaScript. So is, it, is it extend React component? That's like yeah, what this is the way where, it, where it's like giving it extra features, where it's like giving it the React features. Yeah, no. What is just is uh, yeah, it's, it's giving it the component um um the capability of being a component, giving the class the capability of being a component. So this is another. This is another class. So when when this extend uh, when this particular part extends this, it inheriting from this component from this class. So basically, this this part without this part, I don't. This is not a component. Mm. Okay. So without this, if you remove this, it's not a component. You can see showing an error. It's not a so component. Wait, wait, so you remove that part. This part makes this class a component. With the, with really? the class of it, it makes it like a React React function? Or yeah, React, React component. Yeah, React component. Yeah. Okay. There, there's basically, uh, we're standing on the shoulders of the giants that have created React. They've like nerded out and sold their souls their whole life to build the React library. So we're basically standing on their shoulders. All right, I'm trying to get they, that bird. You, yeah, they've they've built like like a lifetime of code into React, and we're basically uh, with that extends React dot component. You're basically tapping into all the work that they've done. That's what I thought. And then with yeah. class, is class kind of like the same thing as const, except it's for React component? Uh, no, class class can be declared like that's. Um, Class, just, I mean, is it yeah, like class and const are different. Yeah. But their functions are different. You use const to declare a variable. Then you use the class keyword to declare. <laughs> the, the name of that class is not distinct or uh, it can be whatever we want it to name to name that. So is it like the same as var? No, class is the class mm. constant you the constant okay. <clears throat> John, let me do this. Uh, um, class is used to declare class. Then constant is used to declare variable. Yeah, class has. Yeah, probably just do MDN and read up on class. Yeah, that should help. That should break. Um, um, just go to. Let me, let me post the link. Yeah, probably just read up on that because th it's saying that it's an expression. 
and but it, it's different than const and let and var. Yeah. But it, it it's it's um it has more to do with objects and and storing content in terms of unless I'm like totally off base, but which I may be, but no, I don't think that's right. I think it has more to do with like you're storing attributes within the class. Yeah. Like that's where the properties are coming from is the class. The properties are held within that, uh, that class, but I say, let's move to the next, uh, exercise. Okay. And, um, because I think we've gotten this one. Unless but I'm totally off base. Or that <coughs> it asks you to use ES6, yeah, right? Like? Yeah. You, um, you can yeah. use, The point is that you don't have to use ES6 in React, but it is advisable to use the but it is common to use ES6 in React. Okay. It's not like you like it's not like a requirement. But it's advisable to use it. Like it makes your code a bit, a little bit compact, a bit smaller yeah, compared to. Like, I mean, ES six is more modern JavaScript, and ES next, and whatever yeah, other like, like, like new iterations of ES. Yeah. Okay, so are you good? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think we're good to move to the next one, and we've already kind of discussed this one with the the fruits. Okay. Anyhow. Okay, React. Use React to render nested components. The last challenge showed a simple way to compose two components, but there are many <coughs> different ways you can compose components in React. Component composition is one of the React powerful features. When you work with React, it is important to start with, um, start thinking about your user interface in terms of components, like the app example in the last um, challenge you you break down the you break down your UI into <coughs> basic um building blocks and those um pieces become <coughs> the components. This helps to separate the code responsible for the UI from the code responsible for handling your application logic. It can greatly simplify the development and the maintenance of complex projects. There are two functional components defined in the code editor called type of fruits and fruits. Take the type of fruit component and, and compose it or nest it within the um, fruit component. Then take the fruit component and nest it within the type of fruit component. The rest, the, re the result should be a child component nested within a parent component, which is nested within a parent component of its own. Nice one. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> type of fruit. Yeah, so we need to nest um, the type of um, fruit component. Within um, fruits. Is the type of foods the top level within the nest? I didn't get what you said. Okay. Is the types of food component the top level within the nest? Yes, yes. Uh, mm. No, it, it wouldn't be the top level. It would be the... Fruits would be the top level, right? Well, it would be... Yeah. Types of fruit is nested within fruits. Fruit... Types of fruit is a, um, a function. Yeah. It's a functional component. It's a functional component by the name of types of fruit. And then we have types of food, which is on even a higher level, right? It, the type of food is, is the parent class, parent component to, to like everything. Yeah. Yeah, so we would put... Fruits, so you put fruits within types of food. So fruit? Types of food is the highest, highest level. And then fruit is the next level. And then types of fruit is the bottom nest. Like having layers, like yeah. layers upon layers and all. So yeah, so it's, yeah, types of food is the highest. 
Yeah, maybe you were saying that. I was misunderstanding you. <laughs> okay, so then we will um, um, nest um, fruits. Voila. So you can see where this part of like, this part is coming from. This is, this part is this. And it's nested within the fruits. It doesn't really have any other thing, but you just um, put this in the leaf. And we add this here. So, this is just a way of um, uh, reusing um, components within React. Yeah, so, I, I see where that could be useful there. Yeah. So who doesn't understand this? But I think it comes back to what you were saying earlier that say you needed to change that list and add more fruits that are fruits, you know, add add, add more uh, list items. Then yeah. if that list was anywhere else in the page, you wouldn't need to add another list. To this yeah, fruit. yeah. You wouldn't need to edit that every time. You could just edit that one instance of the component. Yeah. yeah exactly. Cool. So yeah, I think we got that one. Anybody got any questions? Any question? I think we're good. Been <laughs> going. Yeah, I think I think we can move to the next one. Okay, so this was the one I was working on before. So, we, um, as the challenges continue to use more complex composition with React, React component, and JSX, there is one important point to note: when you need a six style class component within other component is no different than rendering the simple component used in the last few challenges. You can render JSX elements stateless function, functional components, and ES6 class components within other components. In the code editor, the type of food component is already rendering a component called vegetables. Also, there is the fruit component from the last challenge. Next two components inside of fruit, first, non-citrus, and then citrus. Both of these components are provided for you in the background. Next. Nest the fruit um, class component into the type of fruit component below, below the H1 header and above vegetables. The result should be, be a series of nested components which uses two different component types. So, what are we supposed to do here? Also, also, okay. So, we're going to nest two components within fruit inside of fruits and then which is so we have this then we'll um, nest types of food this and this um in the background so we just nest or fruits fruits inside okay okay i'm following yeah. that oh i think darren made this off so i need to add non-citrus first That both of these components are provided for you in the background. Next, next, the fruit class component into the type of fruit. So, oh, wow, that's neat. Yep, yeah. wow, okay. So, huh, again, so what I was trying to say the other time. So, when you when everything is broken down into bits, then to to um, to actually um, change something will be more easier for you to do. And your code will be reusable. There won't be repetition and all of that. Jonathan, this actually makes me think of um, the, the sorting that you wanted to do in terms of sorting people by um, 
say for instance you had javascript learners was the fruits and then non citrus was eastern time zone and then citrus was uh like lagos time and then say you had another time like hyderabad time in india and then you had listed like apples would be jonathan jackson and then the citrus lemons would be um uh, dk and then whatever the other group would be it would be like shrikant you know what i'm saying oh i was muted <laughs> yeah dude i totally see what you're saying man it makes uh... yeah but when you have these set up as components then it allows you to do that maybe but maybe I'm yeah, I'm gonna figure out I'm maybe I'm o I'm oversimplifying it, but I'm maybe starting to see how that, that would make sense there. No, like to to the certain um there's 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 a but there's needs for logic to it. Yeah, you, you would have to have the logic to sort though, you're right. Yeah. Because without that, these are just static uh lists. Yeah, you have from, to write them with yourself. Yeah, because those properties are stored within the fruits class, the non-citrus and citrus components have some have have some properties or have uh, those list items stored. Yeah. But you have to have a way to like map. I think you would have to use the map function in ES six, right? Am I right? If you're wanting to. <clears throat> Yeah, that's a way that you could do it. You could use the map function. Yeah. Yeah, you need to learn ES6, man. That's that's a map thing. I, I'm still learning that, but um Somebody do this. when I'm gotta... when I'm thinking about it, it's basically just mapping um you know, based on a criteria of a property, like say for instance, time zone that somebody's available to study. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's more reduced than map. Map is just used to iterate a particular um, um, array or dictionary. What, what was that? You were saying something as opposed to map? What was yes. that? It, it is more reduced. What you just um, 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 expanded on is more reduced than map. And a what? A what? I said, what you just. Um, um, expanded on is more reduced Deuce. than map. Reduce, reduce, reduce. Reduce. Yeah. Okay. Is that a, that's another one. I, I'm I'm still it's learning. Is used to a tree stop, but based on the particular condition and okay, extra the part of your this thing based on the particular condition, then create another array for yeah array out of the particular condition. Probably look look that up then. Jonathan, reduce and map and see which one of those. Because basically, yeah, you need to be able to store the array of different information. Store the new array, yeah. And then uh, be able to like direct certain things to certain buckets. You know what I'm saying? Like certain containers. And you could use a, a for loop too. So it's a lot of diff different ways that you can do it. It's just a matter yeah. of what you're more comfortable with really yeah but i think that's the that's a good idea we need to start thinking through like how we apply this into projects yeah because that's where like all this learning you can't just like passively just accept it you have to like uh because you're just going to forget it if you don't automatically use it into something like what jonathan's project is yeah. is trying to sort everybody in the w3 develop sign up you know But anyhow, anybody else got any thoughts on that lesson before we move to the next one? Mesfin, you've been pretty quiet, Jamal. All right, let's move to the next one then. Thank you. I can I can read the next one. Okay. Give, give give you a break. Okay. I need, I need to take five, sir. 
Would everybody want to take a five minute break? You want to take Thank a break? You, What's that? Thank you, five. <laughs> All right, let's take a let's take a five minute break, and okay. we'll come back. Uh, I have it's it's midnight where I'm at, so five past the hour, or if yeah, it's yeah. if it's the half hour, then yeah, just come back and. and Come back in five minutes. <laughs> Come back in five minutes from now. <laughs> yeah. Get your Pomodoro. <laughs> Bye-bye. Right. Get some water, whatever you need to do. We'll be back in five. All right? Yep. All right. I think I'm going to pause the recording. All right. All right. We're back from the break, and we're going to jump back in. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for the next lesson. All right. All right, this was the correct one, right? Yeah, okay, because we haven't gotten to this. Okay. <clears throat> All right, render a class component to the DOM. You may remember using the React DOM API in an earlier challenge to render JSX elements to the DOM. The process for rendering React components will look very similar. The past few challenges focused on components and composition. So the rendering was done for you behind the scenes. However, none of the React code you will write, you write will render to the DOM without making a call to the React DOM API. Here's a refresher on the syntax. React DOM dot render, open paren, component to render, comma, target node, close paren. The first argument is the React component that you want to render. The second argument is the DOM node that you want to render that component within. All right, so the first thing is the thing or the component, and then the target node is the place where it needs to go. All right, React components are passed into React DOM dot render a little differently than JSX elements. For JSX elements, you pass in the name of the element that you want to render. However, for React components, you need to use the same syntax as you were rendering a nested component. For example, React DOM dot render. Okay, and then we've got the component to render tag with a close tag and then the target node. <clears throat> yeah, so this is what you were talking about, I think, Jamal, at the very beginning when we were talking about these things. You, you, uh, yeah. you kind of alluded to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You use this syntax for both ES6 class components and functional components. All right, so both the fruits and vegetables component components are defined for you behind the scenes. Render both components as children of the type of food component, then render types of food to the DOM. There is a div with the ID challenge node okay so that's going to be our target exactly available for you to use okay so this is the target types of food is going to be the now we need to render both okay so we're going to do this twice then is that correct no, no, no. Oh, we, we, we can do you're, it once. Um, um, you only render once. Fine. Okay. Render both as child, so you can child of this. So you have to, you have to nest them. No, no, no. <coughs> yes, you have to nest. You have to nest fruits and vegetables within type of foods. Nest you have them. to put uh, fruits here. Fruits and vegetables within type fruits of food. Fruits. Okay. 
fruits, and below vegetables, vegetables, yeah. vegetables. and then the lab, then you render. Now we render. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm understanding now. Okay, React, Dom, render, and then <coughs> the component. We render the parent, right? Types of food. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So types of food is what we render. Okay, yeah. types of food. And then we're going to render it to the challenge node. Yes. Okay, types of food. And then, oh, I got to do this, right? The close. Yeah. Yes, and comma and document. I can just do this challenge mode. No, no, you have to say document. I don't think you need the single quotes for this. Ah, okay. Document. Get document. Get element by ID. Then you have to select it as document. You would do. Get element by ID. Yeah, and yeah. pass it the ID. And then and now I use oh, that. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Node. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Challenge node. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Elliot, you know why you have to use that? <laughs> the document dot get element by ID. Yes. Yes. That's what takes it from the virtual that's, DOM that's, to the actual DOM, yes? That's the node within the DOM, right? No, no, no. But, but because it's what? going, the document is, the. this is the browser, and then an element that is named ID is in yes. the browser. Exactly. So we are rendering the, the type of two component to the, um, the challenge, to the challenge, okay. uh, to, to, to HTML, um, element that has uh, the ID challenge node, challenge dash node. So this is, this is the, the second part is the location we are rendering the components. Right. So you get the, the, the map location, like yes, you are rendering not just uh, New York, but New York City. Exactly. Or like the Bronx, like let's go to the Bronx. Exactly. exactly. Within New York. Exactly, exactly. And to describe it another way, we are taking it from the virtual DOM within React and connecting that to the actual DOM that exists within JavaScript, right? Yeah. I didn't know that, but thank you. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's taking it to... to the actual rend re that's what render is doing. Render is doing that, <laughs> right? Exactly. The action of render is saying, "Yeah, the bit hey JavaScript, here's something to put in the DOM. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody good with that? Uh, okay. Yeah. Elliot, we yeah. need to get more practice with this, but I understand that. Uh, yeah. Elliot. Yeah. Can you like um, explain like the structure of the class? The structure of the class up here? Yeah, like from top to bottom, like the class. Okay. As a whole. So this is the class name that we've given it. Good. Extends React component. This is just accessing the React library for components. Yeah, the React class, yeah. It's in everything from the React, React the component class. A good one. All right. And then the constructor initializes the object. Okay. So what does super do? Uh, super um, lets us know that <coughs> there's properties of a parent, that, which is the div itself. And then there's children okay. uh, um, elements within the, the div. Is that? Let me, okay, let me freeze that better. You know, um, the React component also has properties. So this what super does is, Initialize the uh, properties of the React the component. Okay, that is what Super does. 
So if you want to like initialize the, type, the types of food itself. Yeah, if you, you want to initialize the comp- property. property. Okay. Those are not your properties. That's just the the, rent, the return the return statement or like the render. Right. right. But you could assign a name to it or like within here you could assign a, a name. Yeah, that, that, that's that's like, like you like you did elsewhere yeah, on the that's other. Property. That's a property. So you can yeah. then you can access it With, within, within the tag. It could have properties. Yes. So you can access it with the prop dot the name of the property within your JSX. Okay. You can even access it outside your JSX also. And then you can access it as prop dot some prop dot name of the um property within any part of yeah. your um of your class and then render is just a method that um that renders like i think the return statement I, it just has a lot of action behind it that yeah obviously render is, is accessing the the virtual dom like we were talking about <laughs> but it has these don't just assume, don't just assume. <laughs> but it has this this built into it this part of it is is what's key about render it's uniquely doing these two things with with these two um parameters the component from the um virtual dom to the target node right those parameters are are key when when you're using render yeah but all right, good deal. I think I think we can move on. Does everybody feel comfortable with that? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. How are we doing on time, Mesfin? I think I almost have to stop now. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, <laughs> let's call it a day. Um, and. Um, does anybody have any final thought of like what we can end the day on in terms of what to study or what to think about? I don't know. Maybe leave that to you, DK, and some of the others that have looked at this already. If next we're going to be write a React component from scratch. Okay, yeah. so maybe this is a good practice here that everybody try this at at home. Like this, this looks like a meaty one. Where we're going to be writing one from scratch. Yeah, uh, but John, uh, sorry, Elliot, you know, right. um, we still want outstanding homework from yesterday, so we can still work on that, like the life cycle um, ish. Yeah, if we can still and work on mount, that. Mounting and uh, constructor yeah. and super. No, 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 no. Like this, no, there are two questions that you said one about life cycle and one about super and constructor. Construct, I think constructor is a little bit we've done, we've talked about constructor, but we haven't <coughs> talked about constructor yet. So we can work on that against tomorrow. Yeah. But I think I think a good a good takeaway from today will be uh try to put everything together that we've learned thus far and put it into something like this. Yeah, you write the stuff like from yeah. scratch. Yeah. Play and around you- in your own like code playgrounds and um push those to to GitHub and Let's maybe like everybody go around and share what they made. Okay, I think we should actually um, try to like understand the the like the uh, the basic structure of like the comfort of the um class component also like the render the render function. We should know why it is needed and why it is there. We shouldn't just be adding it yeah. to it. Like we should maybe make research on why it's there. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe put that in the the like yeah, com- comment say- add comments into your code about why. Yeah why uh you're doing certain things no no i think the comment i I, th- I should be able to explain that the comment you know you have to add curly braces to the comment yeah then you add comment within within so, react yeah just um uh, when, when you add curly braces, some the, the, the thing within the curly braces is um um is uh, going to be processed or compiled as javascript anything within the curly braces will be processed as javascript so when you add that, it actually processes the comments. Like then you can add no more JavaScript. I think I add no more JavaScript content with JavaScript um, um, comments within 
the curly braces. You compile it as as um as JavaScript for the comment. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm tracking with you. Okay, so I think we should uh, make research on why the render like the render method within the class and the React make more research on the API call for the React DOM the render also. So I have more information on them. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, let's. Uh, I'm going to end the recording, but uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave us a comment and subscribe and give us a like. But uh, also, just join us in the Discord chat as well. We'd uh, enjoy having you um, join our group and. Uh, and uh, happy coding, everybody.